Hello, hello, everyone. Great to have you here yet again. Welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour. We're approaching the Christmas holiday. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Um, and we just had Thanksgiving on the heels of Thanksgiving. Hey, Wayne, how's it going, Mr. Ferguson? Good to see you there. You've always got some interesting style going on. You got some pretty cool glasses there. Are those uh, reading glasses? Yes, they are. You hear, nice. you hear me? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You hear me? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, just that I have to I have a back action to show you in a minute. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah, great. If, if you're interested, yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm excited. It was a, it was a, a, a conduct, uh, uh, confusing anyway. Okay. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me do a quick intro and we'll, we'll, okay. we'll roll into that. That'd be interesting to see. Um, we're out on, just make sure we're out on Facebook and YouTube and all that good stuff. I think maybe if, let me just double check on the back end. Yep. Things are streaming out. Okay, yeah. Well, as a, as a few more people continue to join, I'll give an intro. Um, hello to everyone out on on the on the socials and stuff like that. Welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour once again, or for the first time, depending on how you're showing up today. So, what we do here is we gather every Saturday to meet with and learn from the most fascinating and knowledgeable folks in the piano world, including manufacturers, rebuilders, musicians, makers of other instruments, and of course, piano techs. Our mutual goal is to become better at our craft, help each other, and to create an ever more musical world together. Piano Tech Radio Hour is brought to you by Piano Technicians Master Classes, an online learning resource that brings you cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home you can find out more at piano technicians masterclass.com uh, we're on the heels of a wonderful live lecture that we had with larry lobel and i encourage you all to sign up to view the recording of that or if you're already a subscriber um well that'll be in your live library at some point soon um I'll put the link in the chat as well and so that people can access that very easily. And also remind you that we have a podcast that's rolling out now, which is something that I want to give everybody an update on. Uh, but maybe I'll roll into that in a few moments uh, because our good friend Wayne said he has some interesting thoughts to share. Uh, in the meantime, I will give a quick link to our podcast. It's pianotechradio.com. And I'll put the subscribe link as well in the chat so that you guys can jump on um, and subscribe to that. And it looks, I'll show you in a little bit, we've been growing very quickly with that. So that's exciting. There's people out there that are interested in listening and you know, reviewing and, and all that good stuff. Um, so I encourage you to participate. Let me grab that link and I'll put that in the chat. And then, yeah, and then we'll roll over to you, um, Wayne, interested in what you got. All right, cool. I put the link in to subscribe to the podcast. Um, let's uh, let's check in over here with Wayne. Let me uh, spotlight you. Uh, what you got going on there? I'm restoring a, a Miller 1922. I'll just move the camera for a second. So I'm going to get it back in the right position. It's the channel there. Cool. Pretty much everything's done. Right? So... Um, now, how did this how did this piano come across your your table here? Well, what's the story real, behind real, it? Real estate agent called me to want to get rid of the piano. Okay, nice. And so I you just it, said, "Is this it, worth it? It's free." I'm I went and looked at it, and because it was full plate, full perimeter, it sounded great. Nineteen twenty two, I knew it had good potential, so I thought, "Okay, I'm going to um, do this." So I'm getting ready for to rescale the. Um, uh, the speaking length of the strings. So I have that there. Uh, and once I put the plate in, I'll get the the V the the V bar location. And I'll take those out and I'll I'll work on uh, rescaling of that uh, the whole speaking length. But before I'm gonna put the plate in tomorrow, but 
what I wanted to do was take the back action out. And uh, it took me an hour to figure out how to get it out. Oh, that's always fun. Was, the issue, issue was uh, I couldn't find any screws to get it out. Oh, I need to adjust this here. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Okay, so um, uh, more or less what happened was uh, I figured out I had to uh, get this out, but there was another contraption under underneath, which I'd never seen before. And I don't know if anyone ever seen this, but the back action has to be totally restored. Everything's glued in place. But what oh. happened was, is when I lifted this up, there's these little pieces under here. And I thought, what's that? Once I figured out how to get this out, I couldn't find any screws to get the back action out. So there's three screws to get this saucer noodle mechanism out. And uh, I've never seen this before. But they have these little, uh, little, you see that in there. And basically what happens is the uh, whipping holds that up in the air. And that's the sostenuto mechanism. Yeah, and then when you put this in, it it keeps the it up. Simple as that. I've never seen anything like it. So 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 let me just so let me just recap here. So so this this whole thing is the sostenuto mechanism or it's a it's it's a combination of sostenuto and sort of damper mechanisms. What it's, you're showing the, us right now is it's the salsa noodle. This is just for salsa noodle. Yeah. And then, and then in order to, uh, so if I push the salsa noodle pedal down, what happens to yeah. that piece? Well, the, of course, the, the, the notes, uh, you're, you're pushing the notes down. So the notes, Certain are notes I'm, yeah, I've got down. Right. So the, uh, so the, of course, the, the damper is up in the air, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So this spring is follow suits goes up. So it always goes up with the damper, yeah. no matter what. But yeah. then since it's then already there, when you, when you engage the, the salsa noodle rail, it's funny, these bend, but it catches on here and keeps this one up. It's kind of confusing, but Yes, once this is engaged, it catches this uh, this one here and keeps the it, it keeps the oh the, I think I see up in place. right so the ones so that are up change their angle slightly and so that 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 can grab them yes so it's just uh, huh. I, I like I've never seen this before and so but this needs to be totally restored. Yeah, are you going to have to do, redo the whole spring mechanism, or are you just kind of redo what's already there? I could try I, to replace I, all that, right? Or well, I I'm going to do what I can. Um, the everything is everything is working. There's nothing broken, right? So I'm just going to I'll be clean, cleaning thoroughly. I got a solar blast, uh, then um, polish everything that I, that I can polish. And then um, the big thing, it, it took quite a while to figure out how to get it out because there's no screws visible. Once this came out, then the screws were visible in the, in the back tray. The three screws were visible, but they were hidden because this was in the way. Right? And that so, was being held in by some screws as well. So yeah, you take the screws three, out. Yeah. yeah, three screws here, three, three screws. And once this come out, then I could end up seeing the the um, the uh, screws in the um, in the back of the tray here. One, two, or three. Lots anyway. of fun. So now, what do you know about? So you said the brand was Miller. Is that right? Yes, Miller out of Boston. Is I don't know much about Miller brand. What do you know about well, it? Is it relatively good or? Well, this this piano sounded amazing. It was uh, uh, when I heard it; it was original, and uh, it, it had an amazing sound and tone. The soundboard is perfect. Um, 
the uh, one of the issues I had with the uh, the A graphs. They were a quarter thirty sixth thread, which I had to go and get a special die made because normal's quarter thirty two thread, but the uh, the threads were really robust, thicker. Uh, well, I mean, uh, the thread was quite fine. So, so, so to get into all this, you know, very humbly, I will have to say, from my perspective, to get into any of this uh, would be very brave for for me to do. Um, I haven't done a lot of rebuilding to open it up and kind of find out what's there and deal with like a threading issue on the A graphs and you know doing the back action differently and stuff like that. Um, where are you at with this? Are you like I can handle all this, or is there a mo is there a part of you that's like, well, am I digging myself into a hole? <laughs> like, where are you at in terms of like confidence with, with like doing the particular project? Just kind of curious. Well, it is always, you know, a lot of work. Two steps forward, a step back. I I did that plate the black, and uh, totally finished. Put it back in the piano, and it looked awful. I didn't want to do gold. So I pulled it out and took it back to the sandblasters to start all over again. And then um, I decided to do it silver. Mm -hmm. And because the plate was uh, such bad shape, I did a lot of, uh, took me about three or four weeks to do all the filling. But then I used, uh, I used hammer, um, hammer paint afterwards. And uh, the finish turned out pretty good. Awesome. And this yeah. is just one that you'll keep. So you'll, cause you, I know you have space for those of you that those both of us that attended your lectures before you showed us kind of like around your home space, you have space for pianos in there, right? Is, will this yes. kind of go on your sort of home showroom or what's the plan? This is going to go to theater in the West end of the city. It'll, 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 uh, it'll live there until I get another piano restored, which is a Chickering uh, six foot seven grand. And that will go to the theater also. And then they'll decide if they're going to go for the Chickering or for the Miller, but they might take both. Oh, interesting. Right. So you kind of already know you have a home. You have like a 50% chance of a home for this piano, no matter what, because you yeah. have someone who wanted a piano. And and what was the conversation with them? They just said, we need a new piano. You said, I'll keep you updated when I have different opportunities. Is that, mm -hmm. is that it? Yes, I've worked with them before. So, and they've they've seen um, quite a few of the pianos that I've restored in the past. So I I try to make a significant difference, you know, with hammers, tone, uh, rescaling. Um, but it, it it's the piano is is what uh, speaks to me, right? I just know that this this was good. So it warranted going through this. Very cool. And what's your yeah. uh, what's the timeline? Do you expect on this in terms of being able to put it in that uh, in that theater? Uh, I want to start putting strings on uh, end of next week, and hopefully, I think by uh, I hope to have this pretty much ready to go by uh, the casework by January, end of January. And then from there, uh, I haven't redone the action yet, but I will. Uh, the action has sort of been refurbished. I'll put the action back in to listen to what I got. And then from there, look at um, changing a um, hammer assembly, weapons, all that other stuff, right? Cool. So it's going to be like cool. a matter of a few months, a few months out, you should have it turned around. Yeah, yeah. But cool. this, this threw me for a loop, and that's going to be a lot more work. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'd do it all for you if I was there. And unfortunately, <laughs> I'm too far away. Yeah, you'll have to do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very good. Um, we got some comments here. Um, let's see here. Brand, so the brand was Miller. Larry said Henry F. Miller made great pianos. Jim Kelly said one of the Boston great builders, along with Chickering and Sons, Mason Hamlin, McPhail, Emerson, Ivers, and Pond. Um, Pat Wilbur asked you a question. If it sounds great, why are you doing the rescaling? What's the uh, what's the story behind that? I think I'm going to uh, um, 
well, I have the, I have the wire size, which is there. So I measured everything, so I know it's there. And I'm going to uh, uh, see what if I can make any sort of improvements by using Palo uh, music wire, or maybe uh, some of maybe Mape stainless steel for the uh, uh, um, uh, for the uh, for the treble. I think it's stainless steel, but anyway, just yeah. Well, just thanks want to for see sharing. what. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing on this. Um, anybody, anybody else have any other or comments uh, for for this particular one? Anybody else working on any rebuilds right now? Um, uh, it'd be interesting to hear if if that is the case. I love that you're always uh, you have some kind of setup here, so you get to be on location in your shop, Wayne. That's pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, but I can leave it. I can turn the lights off and I'm, uh, say I'm not going back there for a week. <laughs> so, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Anything else you want to share or should I, should I move on to the, the next topic? Yeah. No, that, that's it. I just wanted to show you this, actually. Very cool. Okay. Very right, cool. Very good. Thanks a lot for sharing. appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Um, I'll remove that spotlight for you, too, in a minute. Let's see. Add one for myself. And we'll remove here. There you go. Cool. Um, yeah, really great stuff. I, I mean, a uh, couple things that I've sort of shared, um, uh, like uh, maybe in in conversation, but didn't explicitly mention. So um, I have uh, this piano tuning business in in New York City with a handful of piano technicians, and um, it's been interesting because we've had. You know, this happens, but I, I don't actively solicit people to work for the business. So, you know, basically what happens is every once in a while, somebody shows up and they say, they send us an email or or make a phone call and they say, hey, you know, I'd like to get involved with piano tuning. You know, is there a spot? Um, and we we basically offer a, a, I mean, full onboarding. If people that don't know anything about piano tuning, we get them started, we get them out in the field and we have a special program where uh, we do this sort of full disclosure with uh, certain levels of clients that they're working with a newer tuner uh, for practice purposes, and they get a very reasonable rate. Um, and it, it it's a win-win for everyone, you know, the, uh, the clients who want to save a little bit of money, but still get their piano taken care of, get some care for it. Um, the technician who's learning things gets, you know, you just need hours and hours of practice to get better. So the technician gets some practice. And um, yeah, and and it and it, at the same time, you know, we've uh, we've gotten attention of like the the uh, what was it the Wall Street Journal actually, what, some woman from the Wall Street Journal a few years ago was like, hey, this is pretty cool, you know, wanted to try out the system, uh, had one of our relatively new tuners come and work on our piano and write it, wrote a nice little article about it. So we've got that under our belt now. So, anyways, people show up and they're interested. We have two new technicians on our team right now. And one of them, like I mentioned, just starting from scratch, she's a really excellent singer. She has an excellent ear. So I knew she had at least that um, capability. And, and so we signed her up and she's doing pretty well. She's, she's got maybe less than 10 tunings under her belt, but, but doing pretty great. Um, and, uh, and Wayne, we, we, we had Wayne meet with, uh, sign up to meet with some of our technicians to do a little bit of mentorship and stuff like that. So that's been cool. And Larry's been participating to um, off the books uh, here in terms of like, this is not an official apprenticeship, right? It's just a, a chance to, to ask some questions and get some guidance. And um, that's been, that's been pretty cool. Um, but, uh, but I'm very interested in this actually, uh, uh, as you know, just interested in educational opportunities that uh that story that I said that somebody can show up and and ask for a mentorship and we can say yes is I've seen all around the industry for myself included when I get got started it's pretty rare you know it's hard for us technicians out there in the field you know just trying to get our work done and you know stay afloat and and focus on what's important for somebody to show up and we had to take the time to like uh you know show them show them the ropes um so we're happy that we can do that um, but yeah, it's interesting to be able to facilitate some of these uh, mentorship opportunities as well across the country, across the world. Um, so anyways, I would say if anybody's interested too in getting deep more deeply involved in kind of helping the next, you know, 
the next call generation or sort of the newer wave of piano technicians coming to the business, doing some mentorship or something like that, feel free to reach out uh, via email and uh, we can get the conversation started. Um, or if you're out there and you're looking for some uh, some more one-on-one -on -one mentorship, right? We, we provide uh, classes here, um, master classes, and we do the radio hour. But, you know, what if you want somebody who you can say, hey, I'm in a bind. Uh, I have to do, I found this back action, which I don't know what to do with, right? <laughs> and maybe someone who could give you some insights. Um, then that's an opportunity on that end as well. And uh, yeah, the email is Ethan at pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. If you happen to be out there in, in, in Facebook or YouTube, my name is spelled E-A-T-H-A-N, Ethan at pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. Uh, we got a question that came directly to me from Chuck Becker. How long on average are the new techs taking to tune in the customer's home? That's a really good question. <laughs> so we, what I do with the newer technicians, I feel like four hours is like a good breathing room amount of time where the technician can feel like they can take their time. And, you know, even though these piano um, owners are getting a good deal and they're tolerant, they know it's like a newer person, they're going to start to feel a little bit awkward if somebody's like there for hours and hours on an end. But, um, you know, just to be able to have the time for, for them to do the, their best job, you know, check it over as many times as they like. And, and so the very first tunings we often just, I, I usually use the number of four hours and that doesn't preclude them from at the end of that four hours, them saying, I'd like to come back to finish up. Like that's, that's on the table. Um, and I tell that on both parties sides, you know, I make the customer aware, Hey, this, this could, they might need to come back another day to really finish it up and polish it up. And also let the technician know, like, if you really feel like you're in your bind, you know, we can say, Hey, can I come back a different day and like really wrap this up? Um, but to be honest, that level of care, it, you know, or that level of time frame isn't necessary beyond like the first handful of tunings, you know, once we're past five or 10, uh, most of most everyone's getting used to like, how do I get everything done more quickly? Yeah. And that's something that we also just help them understand. Like, how do you go quickly at a piano tuning? Um, and uh, there's a lot of stuff might be intuitive to some of us that have been tuning for quite a while. Uh, but for that beginner, they're not exactly sure, you know, how quickly can I go? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Um, Dave Skolnick, hey Dave, um, he asks, where have these starting tuners learned tuning? Are they doing ETD or oral? Um, so over the years, we've done various levels of ETD or oral tuning. Um, uh, you know, there's a couple of different levels that they can access, which is really interesting. So like the oral tuning, um, the oral tuning is great to sort of ask them to consistently be practicing their oral tuning. And so we, it really depends on the piano technician, whether that's something that we do exclusively for them at the beginning, or whether we give them some recommendations on, on how to have the guidance of an electronic tuning device. So, um, you know, a, a good example is like, um, a new technician that comes to me and I can tell they have like a really good ear, right? Like, again, they might not have ever tuned before, but if I ask them, you know, to pick out notes, if I play notes on a piano and, and they can tell me the intervals relatively quickly, or maybe even they have perfect pitch or, um, or things like this, I'm more inclined to say, Hey, let's, you've already got something going here. Let's work on your ear. Let's put you out in the field. And, uh, and do the tunings by ear. And then on the other side of things, um, it is nice for folk, for them to have the support of an ETD. So, you know, there's oftentimes we say, hey, we're going to send you out there, but let's make sure you have an ETD and you know how to use it. Um, and then there's some sort of hybrid situations where um, we, we sort of uh, get, get them the support of an ETD, but it's not uh, full access, you know, something they could use here and there just to kind of polish things up, but they're expected to do some ear tuning along the way. So yeah, that's the general, that's the general setup. Um, yeah, I think that answers the question, David, where have these start, where have these starting tuners learned tuning? Oh, 
yeah, the second question was, are they doing ETD or well? First, where have these starting tuners learned turning, tuning? So they learn it through us. Well, there's there's multiple levels of, of folks that come on board. So we have um, some folks where they show up and they say, hey, I've been actually out there doing this on my own for a year or two, um, I, but I just want to join a team and I want to be a part of that that system and have that support. Um, and in those cases, it's all different scenarios. Like we've had folks come from being a uh, like a like a team technician at the Berkeley uh, School of Music in Boston. Um, we've had folks who've been to North Bennett Street, so they're you know fairly well trained, but they they want like a system of support to get their feet wet. Um, we have folks that just you know here and there they like met with a tuner in there. That they could connect with here and there, got some uh, input and feedback, and sort of got going. Um, and uh, I mean, that's pretty much every. Those are all the different use cases, right? You've got everything from North Bend Street or some sort of official, like maybe they work for a store or a school, um, getting their getting their bearings, um, to all the way to like you know we're doing it for them. We're saying, okay, where are you starting from? Let's open up. You know, let's open up the egrec book. Let's open up the um, the Reblitz book to the chapter on tuning, <laughs> and you know, go in there and do the exercises, and we'll check in and make sure you're you're getting everything straight. So it's we we that's that's what we've been able to do, and we've been able to get people started from all different levels. But it is it's really it's really clear that um, there's that added value to having our system. So, you know, people can go out and they can watch YouTube videos or they can even enroll in a course or they can even take like a, you know, spend, I think it's several tens of thousand dollars on some official training program. Um, but it's useful to have a curate, like a curated guidance through your journey, right? Like, oh, wait, don't watch that YouTube video. <laughs> like, watch this one, right? That was that one. That one was kind of made by an amateur. And, and this one's like somebody that we really know what they're doing. Another thing that's super valuable, of course, is we have our masterclass content available for them to review. Um, and what's really interesting is, you know, uh, I often recommend David Anderson's tuning concert as one of the early uh, things that they can access. And number one, because, you know, just watching someone tune a piano is very instructive for a beginner to do, to just kind of witness what's being done, let their brain absorb what it absorbs. Like they're not going to pick up on all the minute, oh, how is he holding the hammer? How is he adjusting it? What's the sound? Like there's all these ingredients, right? But but just watching, right? And their brains will pick up on what they pick up on with each new viewing, with each new exposure. Maybe they'll notice some hammer technique. Maybe they'll notice something about the way the pitch is aligned. Um, but, you know, David Anderson very experienced piano tuner, um, but for a beginner to kind of just watch it, it's super useful. And we even um, recommend David Anderson, how to make a piano sing. And I think that just from the very foundational moment, a lot of these newer tuners uh, just appreciate that kind of quelling of the fears, I guess we'll put it that way, that David Anderson does so well. I'm saying, hey, you know what? Like you can do this, you know, just remember what you've what you've learned, what you've studied, and put it into practice. You know, don't don't pay t all this attention to the, the doubt that you have. You know, you're on your journey, and you're going to improve more quickly and easily. You're going to do your best job if you just focus on doing that best job. Um, and so that content's been been super useful for people as well. Uh, Pat says, "Let's see, wait a second. Yeah, Pat says I'm still using the Yamaha PT100." I have three of them if anyone is interested. And this is Pat, is that like uh that's like an e like an electronic tuning device? What is a PT 100 Are you able to speak? I'm not sure. Maybe you're just typing in notes here. I think I guess I'd have to look it up. I mean that that dates me. <laughs> but I think the PT 100 is like an older uh device used for doing electronically supported tunings, stuff like that. Uh Hey, Terry, how you doing, man? It's good to see you here. Oh, unmute yourself. If you can. Can you unmute yourself, Terry? Let me see if I can request that. 
ask to unmute, ask to unmute. See if you get a little request there. Does that work? Hey, yeah. Hey, man, how you doing? What's Good, going on? Thank you. Nice to see you after all these years. And uh, uh, oh, yeah, totally. You're uh, continuing your master classes. Yeah. And whenever I can jump in, I do just to pick up on some of those great details that uh, you and your members have have offered. So, awesome. What's life like for you nowadays? Are you, are you, do you have a pretty active um, uh, service business? Are you tuning? Are you doing like rebuilding stuff? I know you're always kind of bringing something new on, but then you also have other irons in the fire. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, really. Uh, I'm, I'm tuning in a couple of studios, recording studios, and uh, that's been keeping me busy over the last summer since things are kind of opening up now mm -hmm. and they're able to get bookings. So, uh, uh, that's probably two or three times a week, which uh, is fine. I'm not looking to get real busy. Uh, I, you know, I've kind of graduated out of the advertising business uh, about ten years ago when I met you, and uh, and so back into music, which is what got me started really in in my journey. Uh, but um, so I'm back into that and uh, rebuilding. I'm working on my own 1937 uh, chicken ring which I've been you know, promising myself I would try to get finished this, this winter. But a um, couple of uprights I'm working on now and a player piano. Doing, cool. Doing action uh, work. And uh, so... Uh, and you're yeah. north of New York City, right? I've never been to your house. Uh, Where are you located? Yeah, I'm just north of David uh, uh, in, in uh, Pecanical Hills. He's down in Hastings. and uh, Okay. So... Um, very cool. And you have a workshop space? Like how, I do. How, I do. I, I was, you know, I've done a lot of woodworking over the years and build cabinets and things. So uh, that aspect really is, is a lot of fun to keep going on. Um, I've got a, you know, industrial style drill press and big uh, uh, radial arm saw, you know, that's, you know, with working tables and everything. So um Built a harpsichord many, many years ago. So that kind of was my my learning experience uh, in terms of building. Um, so, yeah. I've heard that story. You can, I mean, I don't know if you did this, but there, I feel like there's a harpsichord kit you can order or something and put one together. Well, Is that what yeah, you did? Or? Zuckerman, right. Uh, you know, back in the, in the 70s, uh, harpsichord was used now and then in some of the rock tunes. And I was part of a rock band down in the village. So I really wanted to uh, capture that sound. That is like a really nice thing to have on your resume. I was part of a rock band down in the yeah. village. That that just that tells a whole story, oh, Terry. It's a whole yeah. chapter of your life that I want to hear more about. <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of fun, and um, but I, I eventually did buy the you know and, and um, Zuckerman had his big shop on a, on a loft area down in um, near Christopher Street, and uh, so I went up to see him, and uh, he had several uh, virginal. Uh, and uh, a harpsichord, and uh, he was starting to work on a kit for a, a double double strung, but I I I kind of bought into the single strung uh, a harpsichord kit, German style, um, and uh, that took me about five years of uh, trips to the laundromat while I uh, worked on the action keys, and you know it. it, it it was from scratch. I mean, basically, the you had to put everything together. Wait a second. Let's make. I'm going to clarify. What does trips to the laundromat mean? Is that a well, euphemism? I Sorry. would take all my little parts that I had to uh, fashion uh, to the laundromat while I was doing the laundry, and and uh, oh, okay, got would, it. Would get some of that. You know, uh, we're talking trim the Delrin plectra and uh, uh, work on the weights for the jacks and. Uh, get the key tops ready. And I mean, you know, it's just, just hundreds of little things you had to get ready to uh, put the thing together. Nice. So, uh, anyway, Larry said he did a similar experience, bought a spinet kit from Zuckerman yeah. and built it. That's what started him down the road of piano technology. Yeah. Well, they now have uh, their, their factory is, has been taken over. Well, I guess they bought the rights to use the name and everything, but up in Connecticut, uh, they have continued to uh, manufacture, but in more of a Flemish style. Uh, harpsichord which is the bent style and uh, bent side and um and a little bit longer so that the, the sound is a little bit more sonorous and um uh i bought strings from them so i know that they're still around and they still have really good kits uh 
David Dowd up in uh, up in Boston was one of the uh, people that also manufactured kits back in that day. But um, uh, anyway. Sorry, I was muted. I was just looking up. Um, what is it? Pecanic? What is it called? Pecantico. 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 How far? Hills. It's about three miles uh, east of uh, Terrytown and about three miles south of Briarcliff. Okay. And you can get to NYC via like a train or something? Or what's your yeah. transit situation? Head, head, head over to uh, Terrytown. Uh, it's a big, nice station there and straight into Manhattan in about uh, 35, 40 minutes on a good day. Oh, nice. Um, That's awesome. Wow. It's amazing how it, those places seem so far, but they're not. Yeah. I'm kind of like that here in Chicago. We can get downtown from where I'm at in like exactly like 35 minutes if you take an express train or something. Very cool. All right. Well, we need a workshop space, Terry. So we're going to come up there and we're going to invade your workshop space <laughs> and start. Well, maybe we'll help you finish that piano. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that winter project. I'm, I'm working now on a player piano that uh, all the, all the, uh, uh, we'll call them the, uh, the pockets that uh, drive the player system, the vacuum pockets uh, mm -hmm. and leather uh, leather pouches. You have to mm -hmm. you know, remove the old leather pouch. And uh, so I'm, you know, got the glue ready and uh, I got to get that done first. <laughs> okay. That's cool. I worked on a player piano here where I'm, I'm I do very few jobs over here in, in Elmhurst, uh, near Chicago because not not in Elmhurst New York but like because I go out and I do the tuning and I'm like ah I have other things I've got to do and this didn't work you know this wasn't worth it um not that I don't enjoy it it's just there's many other things I'm doing with this thing with this project and everything but it was a player system the one that I most recently did and it was it was very you know it's it, as it is with sometimes with these piano appointments very emotional right like this woman was like it's the player like i remember when my parents used to oh, this yeah. was a thing and they would play it and it was just to that point where you hit play and it was like <laughs> like it's it's it, it can't quite it can't it, you it you hear something like you hear the notes and the rolls moving around and but it's it's just not it's just you could you can officially say it's not functional yeah. anymore it's not completely dead but i didn't know I don't know. I just, I just said, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, took, I took a couple of classes in Chicago uh, years back on, on players. And uh, so I became fascinated with it because it just seems like such a unique uh, player system. And, um, you know, the, it, I, it was hard for me to understand how the vacuum system could really drive a player as well as it does. Mm -hmm. And um then I had a chance to work on uh, a player system down at the new uh, Whitney Museum on the west side. And oh, yeah. Had, you did that. With, did you do that uh, with um, Mark Hennon? Yeah. Mark Hennon. Yeah. I remember that. That was cool. That was a, uh, a real trip, let me tell you. Uh, what, only what's the artist's name again? Uh, Conlon. Con uh, okay. He was a composer. Uh, and uh, it was outrageous the things that he composed. And uh, uh, it would take four four people to play what he wrote in in, in punched roles, um, but he was at a mile high. He was in Mexico City area, so uh, the vacuum system had to be very robust. Uh, and when we did that at sea level here on, in New York, it, that piano was like jumping off the floor. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, I pulled it off. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, nice. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think I'll have time to pick up that those skills, but I wish. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe later there's these player systems. They're, they're very cool. And it's yeah, it's 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 we just worked on a on an electric player install at the floating piano factory, one of the technicians. Um, and uh, and it was, you know, it, it I'm actually forgetting the name of it. It's like Kaioki or something like that. I don't know if anybody's uh, familiar with this brand. We tried it out, um, but it was actually kind of oh, Kaioshi, K I O S H I. Has anybody tried this Kaioshi player system? Um, we wanted to give it a shot. Uh, let me let me share screen here, quick, so you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, 
tell me if you've heard of this Kyoshi, um, little box, you know, it's, it's one of the selling points here is it's like super, oh, sorry. It's not a player system. You just made me think of it. It's a silent system. Sorry. I don't think they do players. Um, so this is like a silent system conversion, but oh, okay. you know, po- point being, all right, number one, uh, we had some problems installing it. it long story short, um, the design of it was such that like you had to remove the hammer return spring rail or something, you know, in the particular piano, which they didn't really have a lot of support on it. So anyways, check it out. But if you're thinking of doing it, reach out to us and we'll, we'll tell you some of the things to work on. But, but anyways, the general point I was trying to make is like, it's, it's, it's bittersweet. You know, we have these electronic systems that that are much more robust than the vacuum systems, clearly, right? It's easier to just kind of install them and get them going. They take up less space, all that stuff. But the vacuum systems are cool. You know, it's just like a cool thing. So um, it's good that people are, are working on that stuff. Um, I don't know if people know it, but um, Reblitz, Arthur Reblitz, I actually reached out to him. I, invi- I think I invited him to come on <coughs> radio hour and it was interesting conversation because he was like, you know, I'm not really a piano guy. Did you guys know that? Did you know that Arthur Redlitz isn't really a piano guy? That uh, doesn't sound right. Yeah. So he said, he, so he's really into these, uh, what are they called? Oh, the, the, it's, that, it's those things that are more like a, a whole machine that plays music. It'll have like a drum and some bells and <coughs> and um I, I want to say it's called like a symphonium or something Celestron. like that. What is it? Celestron. Yeah, I yeah, exactly. I think that's it. Um I, I can look up his his email. But yeah, basically that's, it wrong, but... that's what he's into. Like the he, orchest- yeah. orchestrion. Orchestrion. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. yeah, that was close, but yeah. Ever, here's an exact quote from his email. Ever since I began tuning pianos during my high school years in the mid-1960s, the main focus of my piano restoration work was on the orchestrion and other self-playing instruments from the 1900 to 1930 era. And so basically, this story is really interesting. His story, according to what he said to me, was basically... I was looking for a book that told me how to take care of pianos because, because I had like a project I wanted to work on. I couldn't find it. So I wrote it, but it's like, <laughs> that's it. That was like it. And then he worked on and he's like, an, I think he's got books on the orchestrion as well. So anyways, interesting collateral story. Um, all right, Terry, we'll, we'll invade your garage or whatever you're working on and we'll help you get that thing back in shape. We'll reach out about it. I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you get off camera. I know you're probably like, why am I here? Why am I still here? (laughs) I'll talk to you later. Um, Okay. What is this, Jim? What is this? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'll say we have someone who's interested in purchasing a PT 100. (laughs) It looks like we have, let's make a deal going on here. Um, so I will make that connection. I just got a private message here. And then uh, Jim Kelly said, Lewis Gentile in Boston is a great resource for old player systems. He uh, he, bail, he bailed Jim out when he got in a jam with a player. All right, well, that's good to know. Um, let, me, uh, let me get to what I wanted to, sh- I just wanted to share with you guys. I'm really excited about the podcast um, and want to share a little bit about that with you guys uh, for a moment. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, Let's get back to screen share. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, there's my email, Arthur Reblitz. Um, So, okay, first of all, pretty cool here. Um, These, this is kind of my back end on the, on the podcast. So we just sort of relaunched this um, about, November 2nd. So just a little over a month ago and, you know, trickle in some downloads and stuff. So we already have about 250 people, uh, 250 downloads of the podcast so far. We've got a good old, good uh, 25 folks that are fully subscribed to the podcast. Um, And you can see things are increasing. So it's really exciting. 
um, that folks are interested in it. And and by the way, I did have it sort of sitting out there as a podcast for a while. So um, there had been some exposure to it previously, but right now we're actually releasing the episodes, you know, one by one as they occurred back in, in their original format. So we've had Rick Overton, Del Fondrick, Rich Galassini there from Philadelphia, Dale Irwin from Ar- Dale Irwin and Arlen Harris episode just came out and they have a two part. So if you can catch the, the first part of that um, this week and the next part will come out uh, in, in Wednesday of next week. And uh, you know, this is pretty cool to see all the different places people are downloading the podcast all over the world. And that, again, that's kind of one of been one of my goals here to get some increased exposure to this information. Uh, but yeah, we got 42 downloads have happened in, in Brazil, for example, Argentina, 13, Chile, uh, Peru. Uh, we have uh, downloads in China and Russia and uh, France and Portugal and Australia and Indonesia, right? Um, really cool stuff. So just want to remind you guys that that's, uh, that's a resource that's available and it's not going to be the full video uh, version of the podcast. And it's going to be, you know, an archival, um, an archival version of the podcast, but it's nice to listen to. And there's some really great stuff that's still there. Um, so you can go to pianotechradio.com forward slash subscribe um, to go catch that. I'll put that link in the chat again so everyone has the opportunity to do it. And um, and this is our subscribe page. We've actually managed to get the podcast out on pretty much every major uh, podcast distribution platform. Of course, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and then like pretty much anything else out there that's distributing podcasts. You should be able to find it. Oh, look, David Stanwood's coming in. That'd be fun to say hi to David. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the podcast. This is the website, pianotechradio.com. Uh, if you want to just listen to it on the website, you can go to episodes and you can uh, just listen to it straight from here and choose the player. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can even take a, take a look back at the different characters that have been on here. And we try to include more information about those folks. And uh, yeah, so that's that. And also, did I have it open? Let me see if I got it open on um, Apple. I think I did. Yeah, cool. Look, we already have we got eight five-star reviews and uh, some pretty cool uh, text reviews. This podcast will recharge your inspiration batteries. Uh, we've got Hear Ye Piano Tech, come bask in the cast of Piano Podness. Very creative one. And uh, piano geeks only. This show is great. If you're a technician or a piano nerd, then this one's for you. So um, yeah, subscribe. You know, go over there to iTunes. Um, I'll put the iTunes link in there and write yourself a review as well. That's really good. It helps spread the word and make sure that uh, that everybody's finding out about it. Um, and then I also wanted to make sure everybody knows that we're we're maintaining some social accounts. So we have Piano Tech Radio Hour on LinkedIn, and we always put updates up about, uh, let me minimize this other window. We always put updates about that um, here on LinkedIn when the new episodes come out. So you can you can follow us on LinkedIn. Right now we've got like 45 followers, right? Because we just started promoting it. So jump on there and follow us on LinkedIn and keep up with what's going on there, you know, make some comments and so on and so forth. So I put the LinkedIn. Um, we're also on Instagram. Uh, our Instagram handle is Piano Tech Masterclass. That's the general handle for uh, for Piano Technicians Masterclass. But we post about the radio there, radio hour there, and uh, we put some clips up as well um, for you to listen to when a new episode comes out. Um, we'll have like a little audio snippet. Uh, we're also on Twitter. Piano Tech Class is our Twitter handle, guys. We only got three. I don't even know which one of these is how many people are following. <laughs> got three or two on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, make sure you find us and follow us over there. Um, I'll put the link in the chat for that as well. Um, we haven't really been recruiting followers here on, on Twitter, so that makes sense. And uh, and of course, we're going good old Facebook, which is um, kind of, uh, you know, Facebook is is not the new thing anymore, but there's a lot of people that are on Facebook. I know the piano tech groups are pretty active. We actually got quite a bit of, um, 
we got some nice uh, responses to some of our posts here on uh, on uh, on Facebook. You know, people asking for a link to the podcast or you know giving some likes and comments and shares to the post. So that's really fun. Um, getting some feedback. I have no idea where this person lives, but again, probably somewhere that's not the states, which is really cool. It's great to know they're listening and and checking things out. So yeah, just wanted to make sure everybody was aware uh, of the podcast, that you're subscribed, checking it out, um, uh, liking and, and reviewing and all that stuff and, and keeping up with it. That's really helpful for uh, for everything that we got going on. Um, I want to say hi to, uh, did David Stanwood stick around? Where are you, David? Hey, Mr. Stanwood, let's bring you up here. What's going on, man? I feel like it's been uh, it's been it's been forever and a day since we said hello. I want to come, yeah. I want to come stay at your your you know your place over there and see what's like in the winter time. How are the sh- the oh, sheep? Terrible here. It's How terrible. are the sheep there in the winter? I guess the I guess they have their sheep their wool coats, right? All, How do they all hold is up? calm, all is bright. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful time of year. Nice. Yeah, I'd love to see you again. Yeah. Bye, cool. everybody. Yep. Yeah, good to see you. What have you been up to? What have you been up to lately? Are you still um, doing some training and and things like that? Yeah, I'm writing. I'm writing. There'll be an article coming out soon in the European Journal. Oh, very cool. Uh, What What's it going to be on? uh, Choosing the right hammer weight. The importance of hammer weight. Very cool. Scaling hammer weights. All the advantages. Very cool. Did you see we did a little bit of a throwback and we? Did a couple sessions from your previous, uh, we gave some oh, teasers you know, from that. your master classes. Yeah. yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. I've been doing some kind fun. of dig into the archives and and do like little snippets from the the private content. Um, so we did a little David Stanwood day and that was fun. <laughs> and hi, Larry. I get, were you, was he talking earlier? Did I? I, did, I don't know if Larry was talking, but he, he was commenting and he's been doing okay. some classes for us as well. Here I am. Uh, Hi, David. Hey, Good hey, to see you. hey, everybody. Look, all my old buddies here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were all we were all waiting to say uh, happy holidays to you there. Yeah, it's great here in the vineyard. Um, so, and Larry has Larry trained. Is Larry trained with you? He's trained with oh, you in I, person. I was is that Callahan correct? Piano? Yep. Oh, at Callahan I'm a Piano. Licensed Precision Touch Design Installer. <laughs> yep. Shouldn't you be wearing like a badge or something, Larry? We- uh, David never gave it to me. <laughs> um, we need some I, sort of. I got to reissue another group of uh, shop aprons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that that sounds good. And and you do pri- do you still do trainings for people? Because I've, I've been doing a lot of Zoom one on one, kind of walking people through the process. Okay. So and the snap method is really uh, so much simpler and calculation free. It's uh, oh, okay. it's a real workbench method. Very cool. So in yeah. and- a lot of a lot of enthusiasm about it, and rightly so. It's uh... now is that something that's open invite? Like you know, if anybody here, I mean, here we have a a nice audience of very pretty sophisticated piano technicians or serious folks. Is that a thing where anybody could reach out to you and say, "Hey, I want yeah, some training any, anytime." And if you have an action you want to work on, and and I can walk you through it. It's uh. Give me your worst. Very cool. And do you do uh, the certification also remotely, or is that something that requires um, in person? Or? Yeah, after a few jobs, it just takes a little longer. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, coming out to my shop for five days is just that's a great way to do it, but it just hasn't been happening in the last, you know, since COVID. But yeah. uh, getting back to that, that's a great that's a great way too. That's the best. I would recommend anyone if you have the opportunity to go stay at David's house. You will it's not. It's a lot of fun. It's you will not fun. regret it. <laughs> uh, when, make you have, sure you... when I have a couple of students, you know, each with a different action with different challenges, everybody plays off each other. It's it's a, it's, it's an intense, <laughs> wonderful uh, learning experience for everybody. Yeah, I don't yeah. know the advantages of being there during this time of year. It could be wet and snowy and ugly. Oh, uh, no, they're, they're, we're, we're very close to the Gulf Stream. Okay. Is that good? <laughs> so it's the Is water, it... the ocean water keeps us uh, relatively warm. Winter. My The reason I say that is I know that if you go during the warm weather, it's awesome. I, I'm not trying to make 
you know, give yeah, you, June, I'm not trying to commit you, David, to taking June, people out on your sailboat. June is, June is another sailing. option. Yeah. Good sailing right. weather. June or September would be the prime months. July and August, there's just too many tourists here. Yeah. It's like, they're like ants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But David, I don't know if everybody knows, he's like a, an avid sailor and he's got a sailboat and he'll take you around to. That's part of know, the training. Yeah. It's part of the training, isn't it? It's kind of like some of that Mr. Miyagi stuff where you think it's you're, true. you it's think you're just true. sailing on a ship, but you actually <laughs> That's how you learn the about balancing it. part. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's all about tension and balance and wires. Yeah. Piano like kind of stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. Oh, awesome. true. It's actually true. Very yeah. cool. Well, uh, how's your wife? She's doing all right. She's great. How you doing, Eleanor? Yep, she's good. <laughs> okay, good, good, awesome. Well, uh, and the sheep—they're fine. How many sheep yeah. do you have? We have seven uh, pregnant sheep. Okay, seven, and they're all pregnant. Yep. Well, as far what, as ha- what happens to the baby sheep? Do you keep them? Is that like a um, part of the business? What is that? We don't name them once we put them in the freezer. Okay. Our freezer right. is quite That's full right now. Okay. Until now, we had a G-rated session. <laughs> we just crossed the line. <laughs> and we share the 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 use we share, and uh, we sleep under wool comforters, wool pillows, and yeah, wool's kind of a theme here. Yes, right. Back again, back in the early well, back in the 1980s, I had this crazy dream to to grow. Hammer felt and, and have Eleanor shear them, and we would actually process and to make hammers. I actually bought six Dolge presses. I'm glad that didn't work out. It just would have been crazy. But uh, I did save those Dolge presses, which were in the Rochester uh, factory. And three of them went to Wally Brooks, and they're they're in uh, Abel factory now. And the others went to um, Serge Harrell in Canada, who used them for many many years. And he's actually those are actually for sale now. He's got some top quality ha- dull hammer presses, which uh, but he'd be somebody interesting to have on your uh, radio. Wh- hour. Which Serge person? Harrell. What's his name? H E R E L search. S E R. Yeah. Serge yeah. Harrell. Yeah. If, if possible, put us in touch. I would love to, I love yeah. to have him over here. Yep. Um, very cool. Well, yeah. And I, for those that don't know, um, David's wife is also an, a, a, wool like a felt and a wool maker, artist yeah. felt yeah. artist felt maker yeah yeah very cool stuff it's a very it's a veritable wonderland at your your location there to see the felt art and the hammer balancing I, and I the, learned sand, a lot about the ships from her. The, yep. yeah very cool pianos stuff. would not be the way we know them without sheep yeah there's no well, other fiber like that I'm really glad we caught you. We're about to jump off. We, we luckily we had a few minutes to chit chat. Yeah, I with keep you. missing these Saturday things, and I say, hey, maybe I can catch a little bit. So I'm glad I got on. Awesome, yeah, and check out the podcast. I think you probably caught me talking about that. Um, make sure you listen back to that. That that's fun for the shop and driving around and stuff. Um, nice. But I'll officially do our sign off here. Um, glad for everybody that participated today, Wayne and Larry and David, and Terry, and everyone that chimed in. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next week should be fine. We'll figure out what's going on. If there's any misses for the holidays or, or, or rebroadcast or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so for today I'll, I'll do our, I'll do our sign off and we'll uh, see you guys next week. We have, uh, da, 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 we have reached the end of another musical journey here at piano tech radio hour. Thanks. To everyone who joined us today, as always, we're brought to you by Piano Technicians Masterclasses, cutting edge instruction for piano industry masters without leaving your home. And for those of you that joined us today by signing up for this session individually, you can make your life more convenient. You could subscribe to Piano Tech Radio. It helps us keep the show going. It's just 16 bucks a month. You can get the recording of today's session in our member area with that subscription, as well as automatic registration for each week's new session. You could sign up at <coughs> Piano Technicians Masterclass dot com forward slash direct access and i'll put that in the chat for you so it's easy uh, to click if you need to um all right everyone it was great to see you today and happy holidays for the holiday season we'll see you again soon